Hello, Church. Welcome back to the Odish Church Devotions. I am Jason, part of the New to Faith team in Central Manchester. The start of a new year represents opportunities of many varieties. As a church, we are taking it as an opportunity to restart, refocus, rethink, reset, and refresh. Over the last few weeks, we have focused on five Fs, faith, family, finance, fitness, and friends. In today's devotion, we are going to remind ourselves about refreshing your friendships. The greatest model for healthy friendship is the early church and the idea of community. Acts chapter 2, verse 44 to verse 47, NIV. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What a community, what friendship. This is the sort of community and friendship God wants for us. How do we get this? And how are the processes to growing and developing friendships? There are three that Pastor Hannah looked at, the chit chat stage, the hangout stage, and the invite round to your house stage. Here is the thing though, in order to cross over into the next stage of friendship, a new level of vulnerability is required. The depth of friendship can be measured by how much of the real you someone else is allowed to see. It all boils down to how vulnerable you are. Let's face it, though, we all have stuff that we don't want others to see. However, your vulnerability will achieve three key things. Firstly, it will break isolation. Acts chapter 2, 46, NIV. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They were not just uh, together, they were actually together and sincere. Sincere is free from pretense or deceit, proceeding from genuine feelings. They were together and were honest. Secondly, it will bring strength. Vulnerability has a bad reputation. We often feel that it weakens us, leaving us feeling exposed. But it actually achieves the opposite. Acts chapter 2, 44-45, NIV. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and positions to give to anyone who had need. Acts chapter 4, 32 and 34, NIV. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had, that there were no needy persons among them. There was a need, dot, 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 and then there was no need. What happened in the middle? Our focus is often on the act of the church being generous, which is important in friendship, but 
For a moment, let's focus on the act of being vulnerable. They had to admit they had a need, and they did. The community, their friends, stepped in and helped out. Vulnerability actually brings strength. Thirdly, it builds unity. Vulnerability not only brings strength, but it builds unity. Acts chapter 4, 32 NIV, all the believers were one in heart and mind. Unity means being one. Your fight is my fight. Your victory is my victory. Romans chapter 12, 15 NIV, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Unity comes when we are vulnerable. Make a choice today. I am going to refresh my friendships. I am choosing to be vulnerable. Have a fantastic rest of your day, friends.